Thank you for having me back. I remember here I was standing last time two years ago here, also in this hotel in a different room, and uh, a couple times before. So today I think we, we talk about an important topic, and you already see I have taken the liberty to expand the title a bit. Hel high performing health systems, conceptualizing, defining, and then measuring and managing, because we need to start with the, with the first things uh, first. And so we will be hearing and talking later about probably many actual reforms, but before we embark uh, to start to, to reform our health system with the aim to improve performance, it's important that we need to know where we stand and actually to, to put this into a concept, we need to know, um, we, 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 we need to know how, well, what are we talking about? When we, when we talk about high performance, when we talk about the various defi di dimensions, how do we define them, how do we measure them? And that's exactly one of the tasks which the European Commission is now undertaking as one uh, of, of their latest initiatives. So together with us as a European Observatory and uh, the OECD, we are starting now with these uh, reports on the various EU countries and the health system. So they should rather say more country health system profile, really. It's not about the population health and in a public health sense uh, only. And the idea here is, is really that the Commission, like many other governments around the, 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 the world, is now that health systems have entered primary stage. I mean, in, in the G20 summit next year, which Germany is hosting, health will be a topic. Last year in the G7 discussions, health was, was on the agenda of, of, of the heads of state. And so we see that is no longer something which only the health ministers are involved, but, but it's really important. And with that being the case, we also, we as the health community, need to know how we present what we are doing and how we measure and demonstrate to other parts of government uh, what we are doing. As the observatory, maybe just, just a sentence, it's a partnership with the World Health Organization, the Commission itself, and many countries ranging from, from uh, northern European countries like Finland, Norway, um, Sweden, right down to, to, to Slovenia and some other organizations. And we provide or try to provide evidence to help policymakers to make better policies. And we often see that, especially as in many countries, they change terms so often that they need a guidance to understand the health system world so that they can then place their ideas in it. And this is also what this, what this talk is, is, is about. And when we talk also with the commission people, with the countries, usually, I mean, the, the starting point of all this is the World Health Report in the year 2000, so 16 and a half years by, by now. And at that time, the WHO first really for the first time in its then 55-year history, looked at the health care systems themselves. So rather than all the broad determinants, and the, the, the main contribution really was probably the creation of the word high-performing uh, health systems and to, and to break it down into dimensions. So how do we conceptualize health systems? What do we measure? And what are inputs? What are throughputs? What are, what, what are outcomes? And the, the framework looked like that, a bit still simpli simplified. There were the, the functions of the system, more the inputs on the very left, probably an important consideration was the creation of probably the slightly awkwardly named stewardship, what today we would say is the governance uh, function, then the processes, so the delivery of care itself, right to the objectives of, of the health system. And at that time, there were three mainly. Health, responsiveness, two people's non-medical justified expectations, and the fair financial contribution. This was then debated and back and forth, and then slightly expanded 
the inputs, the number of input boxes then called building blocks was slightly enlarged over time. Efficiency, efficiency joined the, uh, the goal site. And, and then there were some intermediate, intermediate outcomes because it became clear that the policy jargon in many countries is about access, coverage, quality, safety, and then of course you wonder, hmm, wait a minute, what is the relationship between all these buzzwords the policy makers uh, talk all the time and these overall goals? And the latest kid on the block, and I say we are, we are doing this for the, uh, for the European Co Commission, and they also look, looked at it, and, and a few years ago here, 2013, you see in the bottom line, they also came up with the, with the framework. Some of you might recognize also the, uh, the inheritance here from the OECD quality indicators framework. What is different here, so it, but in the middle they say, yes, we have the health system itself, which determines, and which, is, which is our main uh, objective here to improve its performance, but we also have the non-healthcare determinants, and of course, you can always debate where is the where's the boundary. Is smoking a non-healthcare determinant, or is smoking also something to address in pre prevention campaigns, preventive measures? So then you could place it there or there, and uh, the interesting thing here is, and that is important for my further talk here, that they clearly differentiated between access and quality. And so, and I, I basically then said, this, this is an important dis distinction which many people so far threw together. And some people talked quality was included, including access. Other ones said, no, access is something different. Access is part of responsiveness. And, and so that was very, very con confu con confusing. And we took this as, a, as an important step to develop the template to, to now work on these, pro on these profiles on the 28 or soon 27 countries in, in the European Union. Of course, other people, and you might know this, this is, this is your own, <coughs> um, this is your own health indicators framework. And this is also OECD. Health, in, health uh, quality inspired, but you already see there's so many boxes in, in, in there. And, 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 and in, in the end, the major policy makers want to have an, an, a relatively easy but still valid framework to understand. And this is maybe too confusing here. But the problem is, and I've already, already alluded to, 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 to that, that we all use these buzzwords quality, effectiveness, never know. Is quality the same as, as effectiveness, re, re, really? And then Michael Porter, and it's re reflected here also in the program today, came with value, something which in Europe we economists use it, but otherwise the health policy makers, they don't, they don't use it. And the Porter definition, I think, is also more confusing than helping because he also uses the word value as efficiency, so something divided by, by, um, by money or inputs, and then I'm a non-native non speaker, but then I would say if value is already efficiency, then why do we talk about value for money? Then we would somehow double, double counting. So it's, it's a bit problematic what we are talking about when we look at the various Definitions, it became clear that also policymakers have not a, gun, a really clear picture. The other problem is how do we measure it? And also, that already hit a few years ago, really high level. I mean, if it, if, if it is already in the economists and they say that countries worry how to measure health system performance, you know, it, it is really a big. A, a big topic, and we can totally sign it. I mean, when, when, when you read what the economist said here a few years ago, modern medicine may be good at gorging the health of patients, if it is, but it, it has proved less successful as taking its own pulse. Assessing the performance of a country's healthcare system is no easy task, because deciding what to include from doctors to drugs to diet is difficult, and because some chosen criteria 
are themselves hard to define. Making comparisons between countries is even trickier because uh, healthcare systems differ radically in their financing and organizations. But, I mean, we need to know this is always the excuse. When you, when you show comparative data to any health minister and he is worse than somebody else, he will say, yeah, but this is a totally different system and we have our own history and you cannot really compare. Of course, if, if they rank highly, it's, it's a different thing than it's, then it's it, it entirely their, um, <laughs> their, their achievement. Okay, so this is, this is, the, um, the, this is the level where, where, where we started. And then we, we said, and I said, now we, we, let's, let's talk forward here. And this is inspired, as you see, by the commission thing. We have access, or accessibility, times quality, and quality is really confined, what we measure there, to those who receive services. And then the, multi the multiplication of these two things is then, are then, then, then the outcomes. And on the outcome side, and I will, I will talk a bit about that, it's important to understand that the often separately considered health outcomes are very closely related to what we would say are the responsiveness. Out, out, outcomes. They are clearly related whether, whether the system is meeting the expectations, starting from getting access itself, but also being treated with dig dignity and so on. That also makes a difference on, on the health side. And then we divide this multiplication. We can divide it by, in, by inputs, money and or, and or resources. So numbers of doctors, numbers of hospital beds, whatever you have. And then you get the, the efficiency bit, the value for money. So how much outcomes do you get per input unit? And the whole thing is what we call health system performance. So the, all these contributions, the individual contributions, contribute to health system performance. And it's also very related to the triple aim thing, because then you see they, they, the three components on the left side, you want to want the, the ones above the line to be as high as possible, and the one below the line as low as possible. This is the, this is the, the, the tr triple aim, which we clearly also find in this um, diagram. And this is um, important, because you, because you would say, it, because the, mul the multiplication aspect is, is, is important. Because when you have high accessibility, but bad quality, your population health outcomes will be poor, because people didn't read the high quality systems, the high quality services. But on, on, on the other hand, if you have high accessibility and bad quality, you also have a problem. And so, we need to understand that we have to measure at the three sides. And I think often the distinction between the quality and the outcomes on the population level is not made clear. We have to, we have to look at, at the system or population health out, outcome level to see where, where are we, and ideally then to see do we have the problem more or equally on the access side and the quality, quality side. Quality people going to hospitals and measure whatever they measure there, they only focus on the quality of patients and leave outside their view who gets access. Often access people from social sciences, they don't look at the quality. They are only, only worried about the access, but it's both together. And Basically, the health side and the responsiveness side stretch through the, whole, through the whole thing. When we come to the access side, access also has certain subcomponents. And that is important for policymakers to understand when, when we develop policy, what is inside access. The first three levels is usually what we call coverage. And I will show you this, this coverage cube. So there are three dimensions of coverage. The next ones then are availability of care 
And the last one is, is weighting acceptability and so on. And in these reports, which the European Commission will do, we differentiate this clearly and say, okay, the, the excess situation in a given country, looking at these levels of excess, is like this and that. And I need to show you this. I mean, I'm the inventor of, of, the, of the coverage cube, which now everybody uses to um, explain uni uh, universal health coverage. And the important distinction was that also as a non-native speaker, probably that's why I got this idea, I, I thought coverage, all these English native speakers, they always talk about coverage and I don't really know what, what are they talking. What are they talking about? And then I, I realized, oh, it's three things, population coverage, the health service coverage, so the benefit basket, and how much of the money or how much of the costs are covered for, for the person and how much is cost sharing. And you can use this visualization, which was then picked up by, uh, by, by, by WHO really uh, uh, one, just a year, year later and to, um, to examine these issues. And they all are important. Fortunately, in this country, you also have the first dimension, universal coverage. But we know it makes a difference. We usually then use, use data from the US to see, does it make a difference whether you are covered or not? And we see, yes, it makes a difference. People who are covered, who have health insurance, have much fewer problems than people who are not covered, which is not surprising. But I mean, we have evidence-based thinkers, so we, we need to see, yes, this is really the case. The second one is, and I use data here from the Commonwealth uh, Fund, and, and uh, there's my own classification here. So they asked a few years ago here um, pop population in, in various countries whether they, uh, whether they have problems uh, accessing dental care services. And I, the, the green, yellow, red classification is really to, to put this in place. Are dental services part of the benefit package under the public insurance scheme in that country or not? And, 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 and we see with some exceptions here that it doesn't make, make a difference. If dental services are covered, people have fewer problems in accessing dental services than if they are not covered. Again, it's not surprising but, I mean, we, we see that. And so when we talk about a high-performing system and dental services should, you know, the dental service or other parts of the, of the benefit pa package should be in, then we need to put them in. Otherwise, we know that access will be a problem for these types of services. The third one, cost sharing. Again, data from the Commonwealth Fund where people are asked whether they have problems um, in access due to costs. And I've marked here, there is a cap for cost sharing. Like in Germany, we cap cost sharing at 2% of your gross income. If you're above 2% of your gross income, if you have collected all the receipts, um, then you can ask your sickness fund, your payer, and say, this is my, these are my bills, and from, from then onwards, you are exempted from, from cost sharing, and other countries have similar things like that. And yes, that makes a difference. Countries have cost sharing, but when you cap it, you see that the green countries have lower rates, um, with the exception of Canada here at that, at that stage, than when you're not cap it. Oh, and by the way, maybe we should also say on <clears throat> it's 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 uh, oh no, we don't talk about it. And then you can, and then and then you can. I have so much to 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 say here, so we need to m move on. And then you can, where you don't know exactly from looking at data, like in the latest OECD health at a glance, they now compare basically the box in this in this box framework. Overall, how much is public expenditure, meaning channeled through public sources for health overall and for health services? And this is the, the dot there on, on the right-hand side. And so in most OECD countries, the dot is somewhere along the 75% percentile. and in, uh, in drugs. And in Canada, together with the US and Poland, there's the largest, or with Canada together with Poland, there's the largest gap. So health services are much more publicly covered than drugs. And this is 
coming from the outside, I would say uh, I would I would have a look at this whether there is a problem in 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 drug in access to 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 drugs. The data look suspicious. So I I would be you know if if I would advise you, I would say uh, maybe there's something behind it. Come, let's go to the availability of care. And um, there, a big issue is the urban, the urban rule, this discrepancy. And uh, these are all countries here which, are, which have pretty rural areas. Take Sweden and Finland. I know you argue Canada is very rural in the north, but Finland is also, has also very rural areas. And this looks at the density of uh, f f physicians, and I added these multipliers there. And, and, and we see when you look at, at uh, Finland, Sweden, Korea, Japan, the multipliers between urban and rural are only between 1.0 and 1.3, meaning per population in urban areas, there's only up to 30% more physicians than in rural areas. While in Canada, for example, the multiplier is, is, is two and a half, and in, 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 in France it's 3.2. And if we see these figures, we would say, okay, you need to have a look and um, whether there is a problem. John, I still have like eight minutes. <laughs> I, I saw you here, and I might even need ten. Okay. Um, so that is, that, is, that is a problem, and, 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 and I talked to John last night, I already said, yeah, in Finland, for example, I mean, how do they get physicians to the rural areas? Well, the, 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 the municipalities are the purchasers, and so if you are a municipal government, you are interested that you get a, that you get a physician right in your community. Waiting, again, data from the Commonwealth Fund, Commonwealth Fund always does this population surveys that invites ministers to comment. Unfortunately, they don't present data in the longitudinal way, what I have done here. And then, of course, we see that there are, there are countries which 10 years ago had a problem with waiting and changed the UK, marked in green here. And there are other countries where the, where the data year after year are the same. And you know, so this is, of course, an important uh, component. In Europe, we, we summarize all the people who have a need and who th at some stage in the financing option, the availability or the acceptability f fall through the gutter. So we do regular surveys in all 27, all 28 member states and calculate the unmet need. And, and this is then the data which we use, and you see that this is the German names here. Yeah, I didn't manage to <coughs> change them. Um, on the left hand side is Slovenia and the Netherlands, like with 0.2, 0.5%, Spain 0.6% of people saying, yes, I had a need to access health services, and due to cost, distance, or waiting, I was not able to get it. And on the right hand side, you have uh, Greece, Estonia, and Latvia with 11 or 12 percent. So, so there are important differences, and it's not only how people interpret the questionnaire, what would be the answer and when you look, ask the ministers on the right-hand side. What we can also do, we can break these <coughs> figures by income level. So we divide the numbers uh, into quintiles, and we see that Latvia not only... So when you look at Estonia and Latvia, they are very different. In Estonia, Everybody, independent of income, has a problem. While in Latvia, the problem is mainly for the poorer population. So important information when you design your system towards higher, per higher performance that you get data like this. Um, and then there is, uh, again, from the Commonwealth Fund, where people were asked whether they have cost-related access problems. This is only by, by half, so above and below the 50th percentile. And uh, I have get, again and added the multipliers. We have countries where the poor are, are, are not that much more affected, like the UK. And we have countries where the multipliers are around three or even four. And Canada, again, 2.5 here. 
on the higher side of the differences between the high and the low income people. Then we have inequalities in access to physicians. And, and that differs where there are countries where it basically doesn't make a difference. Your chance of, of seeing a doctor is not dependent on, 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 your, on your income, and there are countries where it makes a difference. And some countries it is that, 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 that the poor go to the GPs and the rich go to see the specialists. And when you see that, like Greece, Greece is the most, most drastic example of, of that one, then you know there's a problem. And there are really, when we are now preparing the reports for the European Commission, we, we saw that there are more data available than when you really look, have, a, have your list of dimensions and indicators, and see, okay, let's see what is available on the to, to, really, to really take the pulse of the country's health systems. And there's more than you think. In OECD, it looks a bit... You might be aware in the latest OECD report, they, they have this, and this is the access table, these relatively simplified versions. And then when you look at Canada, you think you're, you're doing, okay, they are certain not available, the unmet need, because they only have the data for the European countries. Otherwise, you're in, in the green here. The question is whether this is not falsely meaning that you think, oh, we don't have a problem here. Quality, and quality I will talk much less about because I think many other people in the room will be talking much more ab ab about it. So this is for the people who reach the, 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 the healthcare system, and this is what usually clinicians talk about. But clinicians often have the view, I'm a phys physician myself, so I may say so, that, that you only look at the patients who reach your door and you don't look outside whether there are more people needing your services but who didn't make it to your hospital or practice door. And then quality is only measured for those people who make it to the door. And uh, OCD says there are three dimensions, effectiveness, safety, and patient experience. Starting with the, with, with the last one, and that is the good old WHO concept of responsiveness. And it's has two major parts, respect for persons and the client or patient orientation. And um, we recently, in, in a study with chronically ill in Germany, we did focus groups and questionnaires and everything, and, and we saw that to the eight dimensions given by uh, WHO, at least two new ones in the focus groups were, were necessary. In the first one, it's, it's uh, besides dignity, autonomy, which means taking the patient's view into, uh, in, you know, in, into account or let him co-decide which services uh, to provide confidentiality, clear communication. There's a trust issue. Trust meaning the patient trusts that the health system and the provider is acting to, on, on behalf of the patient and not on behalf of his own wallet to, to, provide, to provide services. And on the client and patient orientation between the choice of provider, prompt attention, quality of basic amenities and uh, access to social support, it's a coordination. And I think the OECD, when they developed the responsiveness uh, concept uh, almost 20 years ago, coordination was not yet seen as such a big topic as, as, as it is today. And today, when you ask patients, they say, yeah, but you know, coordination is, is, is a big thing, meaning both coordination in between providers but also whether the provider, him or herself, still knows what, what they have done three weeks earlier. There are data. When we only look two dimensions here, oh, there, there's a, the, the red box missing. So there are, when you, when you know that these are the, the responsiveness dimensions, you can then read data, again collected from the Commonwealth Fund and, and the OECD here in the OECD report, and, and then see, yeah, okay, the doctor providing easy to understand explanation is a clear communication uh, dimension of responsiveness. Doctor involving patients in decision is the autonomy participation uh, dimension. And there are data, there are countries which do much better, and there are probably then countries to, to learn from what do they do differently. And we come back to that later in the, in, in, in the panel. And then there's the, 
the hard core, let's say, of quality measurement, and I think we will hear much, much, much more. And I brought this because it's a bit difficult to read in the OECD uh, report, and it has, this one is patient only. Patients admitted with AMI to hospital, how many of them die, and Canada is doing in the upper half here. And interestingly, there are also data in the same report where you have the 30-day mortality, so including follow-up in the ambulatory care system, telling you something about the coordination, and um, rankings change. And it's important to, to, to then, then, then you know, talk about these issues and see maybe you're, in this case you're doing better than, than all the other ones. Um, so, so there is also there are good, good things to preserve. Because, I mean, this is also the thing to know where are we really doing well and what should we not change so that things don't get worse. Here's a report card, a bit more mixed from, 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 from OECD, doesn't look as well as for excess. Maybe in this case I would say it's a bit underrated. So it's not, you know, you cannot take these report cards really at face value. And that brings us to the last quick point, how do we bring all these things together? And this is really where we have, over time, had the least progress among people uh, like us providing advice to policymakers. And the one thing which has emerged in, uh, in many countries now that we say, okay, of, of, of all the factors influencing overall mortality and life expectancy, healthcare is not the main component that we say, okay, but it is when we concentrate on certain deaths, which we call avoidable or amenable to, 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 to healthcare, and besides that, the, the negative ones, basically, which you have to add on the avoidable mortality would be the medical errors. And so this is a contribution, both positive and negative, of the uh, healthcare system. There is a slide on the, on, on the concept, which we will skip. And this is the overall picture, and you are the first ones to see these, to see these, these data, including Canada. It's a bit complicated maybe to understand, but you are clever people here. So on the y-axis, and this is the last bit I want, I, want, I want to show you, on the y-axis you see the avoidable mortality per 100,000 people. So the higher, the worse, the lower, the better. And we see here all these countries here. I added simply Canada to a bunch of European countries here. So we, in our reports, we only have the European countries in it. And I added Canada. And, um, and on the right-hand side, so uh, on the x-axis, you have the expenditure per person in uh, purchasing power parities. And the graph is all, it's a country over time since 2000. So it shows you the, the, the move to the right, is getting more expensive, the, the move to the bottom is getting better because fewer, uh, fewer avoidable mortality cases. You can then calculate that, how did countries improve here, both in absolute terms, and we see that the United Kingdom had minus 60 over this period, followed by Denmark and Austria, minus 55, and then and Germany, minus 49, and then you have France, even though they already had a very low level, minus 30, Canada minus 32, and I give you also the percentages in the decrease over that time, which you could use as the most aggregate level of the health component of uh, health system performance. And then we can take the cost effectiveness view. So during the decline, how much did, 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 did countries spend more? And then you get the in incremental uh, cost-effectiveness con consideration, and this shows you how many deaths you have prevented, or the countries have prevented per every one thousand dollars spent more, and then the, the let's say the the co most cost-effective system would be the UK, and we talk later about the reforms which, from this aggregate level, look really impressive in in the results, followed by Austria, Denmark. And then, then, then the, the, the other group compromises France, Germany, Netherlands, and Canada. And I also did, and maybe you ask where the US is, 
that didn't really fit on my that really didn't fit on my graph here, and um, so it it is really a totally different system, and it's highly not only is the, is the decline average, but the I mean the cost effectiveness over the last 15 years is really far worse than in, in than all these other countries. While Canada is like an average European country, as you will will see here. And so, in, in summary, this is how I conceptualize it, how we talk to the commission, how we talk to health ministers to really say, okay, you need to, you, you, we need to know, okay, what are we talking about? And I hope that I could bring some of the ideas across what is high performing and that we need to define and, and measure, we need to know how we define it and, and measure it. And this is important then, once we have, then we set goals objectives that we then also agree, agree who is responsible, responsible for what. Maybe the access component is more policymakers turf, while the quality thing is more up to, up to the providers also. So there are mixed responsibilities, but it's always important to take a population or a system perspective and not only concentrate on the people who reach the healthcare service door and only focus on, on, on them. And last but not least, taking the cost into account is also important. Thank you.